Okay, so this is where I'm gonna get into the spoilers. I also fucking loved the intentional little continuity errors and shit that kind of threw you off and you kind of felt there's there's something there's something off, you know, and you couldn't quite like um I mean, maybe I don't know. There was something fucking weird about when she got that glass of water. Is it just me or did she not actually pick up the fucking glass? It looked to me like she was just holding her hand just, you know, in the drinking motion as if she was drinking. And, you know, then she puts down, and then she was holding the glass, puts it down, then it's empty. She gets up and it's halfway full. I personally think that was completely intentional. I think that was to throw off the audience and to, you know, just to give us that sense of there's, there's something going on here that's not quite right. One thing I did wonder, if he was off his meds for all that time, wouldn't he hallucinate more towards the end rather than less? It seemed like he was hallucinating less and less. You know, I mean, there's there are the dreams early on, and then, I mean, what does happen is that, you know, his hands start shaking and such, you know, from the withdrawal, but if the meds were supposed to, like, keep some kind of hallucination down, I don't know, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But yeah, I thought it made perfect sense, you know, from a psychological standpoint, how he turned, you know, the, the kids, his three kids dying into, you know, oh, why didn't we make it to the extermination camp in time? Why didn't we make it before they had killed all these people? because he couldn't handle it. So he had to turn it into something else and he had to invent this other personality for him because he couldn't handle being this monster that he perceived himself as because he had let um, them die and then he killed her, which, you know, at the time he felt like it was the right thing to do. You know, and it, I think personally also um, some so, somewhere deep down, he's asking himself, was it because she asked me to, or was, you know, did I want vengeance? Did I secretly hate her then? You know, he had just said, if you ever loved me, stop talking. You know, it, I, I think there might have been a, a little bit of internal conflict there. I also can't help wonder if he was sort of pretending to have had a relapse there at the end because he didn't want to live, I don't know, it, it could also work just the straight way that, he, you know, he did realize it, but he relapsed because he couldn't handle it. He just couldn't live as a monster. I also think it says a lot that very early on he says, you know, I don't give a fuck about these people being calm, you know, I, I couldn't care less because deep down he's like them and what you hate in other people is usually the bad stuff that you know deep down is true of yourself and you can't quite admit it, you don't know how to get rid of it, so you project it. I do gotta wonder, I mean, it's a very elaborate role-playing game to begin with, the whole idea of all of them, you know, and he's their most dangerous patient, it was really radical, um, I mean, that's probably the biggest, I don't know if I would really call it a flaw, but it's a tough pill to swallow, and it's really one of the only negatives I can think of for the entire movie. I mean, I fucking loved it. I loved every second of it. It gripped me immediately and did not let go, but that was you know, you had to really believe that for the whole to work. I especially got to wonder about the patients. I mean, in retrospect, now, you know, now that I know that they were acting all along, it makes perfect sense how they were, like, you know, staring at him there uh, relatively close to the end. Um, 
you know, staring at him and pointing and I think at one point laughing and just, you know, acting strangely. That was because of the role-playing game and maybe they were kind of, okay, do we have to play these parts for terribly much longer or something? Would they really be able to not just spill it and just say, you know, I mean, the, the, the name he questioned all of them about was his own name. You know, so they must have all been told, pretend that he isn't saying his own name. I do also personally think the, um, if the wife was, I'm not gonna say only, but if she was manic depressive, if that was definitively what she is, I'm not sure, I'm not the biggest expert, but I'm not sure she would have reacted the way she did after the children are dead. I'm not sure that she would have been saying, you know, they'll be our own little live puppets or, you know, that was a little, a little bit strange and I think that might have been dramatic license because they needed to push it a little further, they needed to really get him out on the edge and just, you know, make it just unbearable for him and the audience. And it worked, definitely. I'm just not entirely sure, you know, but it can be forgiven, in my opinion anyway. So much of the rest of it was completely accurate. I fucking loved the, the doctor out in the cave talking about once you're declared insane, your protests are just delusions and your reasonable fear is paranoia. That was perfect. One thing I did think about, which obviously is completely null and void now that we know that she doesn't fucking exist, how the hell did she survive out there? How did she get water? How did she get food? Was she eating rats? But anyway, you know, obviously his own paranoid delusion didn't quite encompass that and that, you know, really just shows of a flaw in his fantasy. And I'm not going to claim that I had figured out that she wasn't real before they said... Now, let me preface this by saying I didn't actually want it to end. It wasn't like I was bored. But did anyone else near the end kind of think, okay, is this the ending? No, it wasn't. Is this... I mean, once he's in the lighthouse... I kind of thought that that would be where the film ended. Then we had the flashback. Fucking good. I thought it would end with that. And then we had, you know, him admitting it. And then we had them, you know, outside. And he seems to relapse anyway. You know, I kept thinking, is this the ending? And then it turned out not to be. Was it maybe intentional to cast someone as skillful and famous as Elias Kataeus, Kataeus, whatever, in such a, a, such an absolutely tiny role. I mean, you maybe thought that he was gonna appear a ton in this, and he was really only in that one really brief sequence. The the dream with him, you know, lighting the match, and you see the face, and and that was it. Um, that maybe that led us to believe that he is going to find um, Andrew somewhere on the island. I also thought it was absolutely perfect how the idea of Dolores that appears and you know insists if you go in there it will destroy you. That was, I mean, there's the thing about you know how that's of course in his mind because somewhere deep inside he does realize the truth. He just can't handle it, and that's why you know the defense mechanism and destroy you because Edward Daniels doesn't exist. It's a personality that he you know invented to be able to cope and. That is what will be destroyed if he enters that room. But yeah, I think that's all I had. Um, I fucking loved it. Best movie I've seen in theaters since Avatar. I will see you next time.